The discussion tonight is about climate change. And I'm really happy to have two guests with us, John Ankele and Richard Whiteford. John Ankele is co-sponsor or co-director, producer of the movie, The Wisdom to Survive, Climate Change, Capitalism, and Community. Welcome, John. Thank you, Claire. And Richard Whiteford is a writer and environmental activist from Downingtown. He now represents the Climate Reality Project and the Citizens Climate Lobby. We're going to see two segments of a movie, Wisdom to Survive. The first we will show you now, and then John and Richard will comment on aspects of that section of the movie. So let's roll the movie now. Our deep economic inequality, which has always been a sin, is now an enormous practical impediment to getting action. Because China, India, and the rest, uh, the easiest path for them to pull people out of poverty is to do it the way we did it, burn lots and lots of cheap coal. If they do that, there's no hope of dealing with the global warming crisis. It'll just overwhelm us. We have to figure out some way to allow China and India and the rest to forego that coal burning and develop anyway. And that's going to take some serious help from the rich world uh, in the form of technology and resources to allow that leapfrogging to happen. We'll find out if we're generous enough to do that or not. It's all a question of pace, whether we can make the politics change as fast as the physics and chemistry are changing. I'm always well aware that the uh, world around us is not going to be any more beautiful or intact than it is right now, so I do everything I can to uh, take great pleasure in it. One of our jobs is clearly to bear witness to the beautiful world that we were given and to understand that it's never going to be quite this glorious again, so we better pay attention. And I do. Dear darkening ground, you've endured so patiently the walls we built. Perhaps you'll give the cities one more hour. And the churches and cloisters too. And maybe those that labor You'll let their work still grip them for another five hours or seven before you become forest again and water and wilderness in that hour of inconceivable terror where you take back your name from all things. Oh, just give me a little more time. I just want a little more time because I'm gonna love the things. I'm going to love the things as no one has thought to love them. Every time I see this movie, I'm just amazed at the effort mm. and persistence that you had to make it, to put it together. Like, what motivated you? Yeah. Um, you know, it was an interesting thing. My colleague, <clears throat> Anne McSood, co-producer, mm -hmm. she had been at an event with Bill McKibben who's the leader of 350.org, mm. and uh, kind of the on the vanguard for many years, for the last 20 years, really, mm -hmm. of the climate change movement. He was on the staff of The New Yorker, and at that time he wrote a series of articles that ended up in a book called The End of Nature. But he and many others who were prescient saw this problem coming. And Anne met him, and uh, he gave her a book his latest book called Earth, and she read it and she was quite um, inspired by it and also alarmed. And so she gave me the book and I read it. And we were just shocked with the sense of urgency that was coming through Bill McKibben's understanding of this issue because he's done research for 20 years on it and really is the scholar. and in terms of the science and the economics and everything. I think there was some footage in the movie mm -hmm. where uh, t 
two years ago in February, we went to the White House and there were 40,000 of us. It was very cold <laughs> outside that mm -hmm. day. And we had a, a big fake uh, pipe, oil pipe, mm -hmm. and we surrounded the White House with it. That was the beginning of that movement. Now, mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago, we had 400,000 people in New York City to tell the UN that we want to have this taken care of. We want something to be done with this. Mm -hmm. This movement is not over yet. Mm -hmm. That's what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and no, this, the, mm -hmm. our lives are at stake. Human survival is at stake. We have got to do this. And so far, money has talked, but it's only gotten away with it this long because there hasn't been a big enough, strong enough movement to change that. Mm -hmm. And we have an election coming up. They can spend all the money they want, but if everybody gets out and they vote, and they vote some of these people out of office, it won't matter how much money they spend, they'll be out, they'll be gone. Mm -hmm. We need to get people to get off the couch, you're invested in this, you, if you, especially if you have children. If you have children and you have grandchildren, you owe it to them to get the bull by the horns and do something. 